I stopped turning compost when I found this 1,000-year-old trick that heats it naturally. You've been doing it wrong. All that backbreaking work turning compost with a shovel? You can stop. Right now. There's a centuries-old method that keeps compost steaming hot and perfectly aerated without lifting a finger. I learned it, tried it, and I haven't turned my compost once since then. Welcome to Soil and Crops Central, where we dig deep into ancient soil wisdom backed by modern science. The compost problem you didn't know you had. Every gardener learns the same rule. You must turn your compost to keep it alive. Turning reintroduces oxygen, prevents foul smells, and keeps microbes active. But here's the hidden truth. Every time you turn your compost, you're also releasing valuable heat and disturbing the microscopic communities that do the real work. Composting is supposed to mimic nature's forest floor, not a construction site. Ancient farmers understood that perfectly, and they built compost piles that breathed naturally without a single turn of a shovel. The Lost Secret of Self-Aerating Compost More than a thousand years ago, farmers across Asia and the Middle East discovered that compost didn't need to be stirred to stay alive. They used a system of natural airflow, what modern science calls the chimney effect. It's simple physics. When warm air rises through the center of your compost pile, cooler air is pulled in through the sides, creating a gentle flow of oxygen that feeds the microbes. This natural current keeps your compost aerobic, hot, and thriving without your intervention. Here's exactly how I built mine, and you can too. You'll need a compost heap or bin that's at least one meter on each side, roughly three feet wide, long, and tall. That's the ideal size to build enough internal heat between 130 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. Then you'll need three to five bamboo poles or PVC pipes, each about two to three inches wide, or five to seven and a half centimeters. Use a drill to make half-inch holes along each pipe, spacing them every 6 inches or about 15 centimeters. These openings are crucial. They let air move in and out along the entire length of the pipe. Once drilled, insert the pipes vertically into your compost pile, spaced roughly 12 to 18 inches or 30 to 45 centimeters apart. Push each pipe all the way to the bottom of the pile so air can travel from the base right up through the top. Now build your compost as usual. Start with a 2 to 1 ratio of browns to greens, two parts dry carbon materials like straw, dried leaves, or shredded cardboard, and one part nitrogen-rich materials like kitchen scraps or fresh grass clippings. As you layer, make sure each section is lightly moistened. The right consistency is that of a wrung-out sponge. If it's too wet, oxygen can't circulate, too dry, and decomposition slows. To get the balance right, for every 10 liters of dry materials, sprinkle in about 1 liter of clean water. You don't want puddles, just damp fibers that hold together when squeezed. As the compost heats, those air channels you created will draw in oxygen automatically, keeping the whole pile active without turning. A bonus trick. The clay core method. In drier regions or during hot, windy months, moisture loss can be a problem. That's where another ancient trick comes in. The clay core. Instead of using multiple hollow pipes, some farmers buried a porous clay pipe or stone column right down the center of the pile. Clay naturally absorbs water and heat during the day, then slowly releases both overnight, maintaining consistent humidity and temperature. You can replicate this by using an unglazed terracotta pipe about 3 inches wide, or 7.5 centimeters, and tall enough to reach from the base to the top of your pile. Pour a small amount of water, about 1 liter, into the core once a week. The clay will absorb it and gradually feed moisture back into the compost. Once your pile is set up, just step back and let nature do its work. After about three days, you'll notice steam rising from the top, proof that microbial activity is thriving. Check the internal temperature with a compost thermometer if you have one. It should stay between 130 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. That's the sweet spot where thermophilic bacteria break down even tough plant fibers into rich, dark humus. If you don't have a thermometer, you can use the hand test. Carefully push your hand a few inches into the pile. It should feel warm, but not scorching. If it's cold, your pile needs more nitrogen. If it smells sour or rotten, it's too wet. Add dry brown material, insert your pipes again, and let airflow rebalance the system. You'll also want to maintain the right moisture level throughout the process. Every two weeks, sprinkle water over the pile until it's evenly damp, using roughly 2 liters for every cubic meter of compost. This small effort keeps microbes hydrated and oxygen circulating freely. After just a few weeks, I noticed the difference. My compost stayed hotter for longer, breaking down food scraps faster than ever before. The smell disappeared completely, replaced by that earthy forest aroma gardeners dream of. I no longer had to grab a shovel every weekend, and my compost matured into dark, crumbly humus in just six to eight weeks. This natural aeration system not only saves time but also creates higher quality compost. Because the microbial colonies aren't disturbed by turning, they multiply faster, digest material more completely, and produce richer organic matter with a finer texture. In other words, your soil gets a more potent boost with less effort. Modern composting often focuses on equipment, tumblers, bins, mixers, but ancient farmers relied on understanding airflow, heat, and biology. This method proves that efficiency doesn't come from gadgets. It comes from harmony with natural systems. When you let compost breathe naturally, you recreate the same conditions that build fertile soil in forests and grasslands worldwide. The beauty of this secret lies in its simplicity. It's renewable, low-cost, and adaptable anywhere, from urban compost bins to rural farms. And for small-scale gardeners, it's a game-changer. No noise, no labor, no wasted energy, just compost that practically manages itself. So if you've been turning your compost every weekend, stop. Let airflow do the heavy lifting. Drill your pipes, build those natural chimneys, and let ancient science take over. Within weeks, you'll see why this forgotten method still outperforms modern composting shortcuts. Healthy soil starts with healthy compost, and healthy compost starts with oxygen. This trick keeps your compost alive, hot, and nutrient-dense without a single turn of the shovel. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe and share it with other gardeners who want richer soil with less work. You'll find more timeless soil wisdom and sustainable growing techniques right here on Soil & Crops Central, where the old ways are the best ways.